year three and four. It's me, Mr. A, back with story time for another day. A little bit late, apologies. Uh, but uh, we're going to carry on with um, the amazing story of Adolphus Tips. Let me just uh, start my timer. Right. PPS, I've woken up again. I just had this dream about Tips, and what's more, it was a dream that came true in a way. I want to write it down now before I forget it. I dreamt she came looking for us through the snow, that she found her way in through the kitchen window, ran up the stairs, pushed open the door and jumped on the bed and was purring in my ear. When I woke up just now, I was so happy because my dream had come true. I could feel her warmth against my face. She was back. She was purring in my ear. But then I woke up properly and it wasn't her at all. It was Uncle George's tomcat. He's still here and he's looking up at me out of his wide yellow eyes. I wish they were Tips's eyes. Uncle George's cat wants me to love him, but I can't. Maybe Tips isn't ever going to come back. For the first time I'm beginning to think that perhaps she has gone forever. I mustn't think like that though, I mustn't. Once the snow's gone I'm going to go and look again and again until I find her. She's got to be alive, she's just got to be. If she is alive she'll be looking for food. Stupid. Stupid. Why didn't I think of it before? I'll pinch some food from the larder. Leftovers. No one will notice. I'll put it out for her in the hay barn back home. Then I'll watch and wait. She'll be hungry. She'll come. She's got to come. She must. Thursday, February 10th, 1944. I must have been in and out of the wire looking for tips half a dozen times or more now. Every time the food I'd put out for her was gone. But I was never there when she came for it. I was so sure that sooner or later I'd get lucky and she'd come while I was there, while I was waiting for her. Then today the very worst happened. I went off as usual after tea, when everyone else was feeding up the animals. No one was about. As usual, the food I put out in the hay barn yesterday had gone, so I put down some more and then waited up in the hayloft, hoping and hoping this time she'd come while I was there. That was when the dog came running into the barn. A huge Alsatian, so big, big as a wolf. He went straight to the food and snuffled it up, knew exactly where it was. It was him. It was the dog who'd been taking it all along. Maybe I moved, maybe he smelled me, I don't know. But uh, all I know is that he looked up and began barking at me, teeth bared, his hackles up, his whole body shaking. Then there were sounds of voices and running feet, and the American soldiers came. They were looking up at me and pointing their rifles and shouting to come down. They couldn't see me, but they knew I was up there all right. They kept shouting and saying they were going to shoot unless I came down. So I did. I was hoping Aidy would be there, or Harry, but it wasn't them. All their faces were white. The dog looked as if it was going to eat me, so I waited halfway up the ladder till they caught him and held him. One of them said, Holy cow, it's a kid! And they walked me outside and bundled me into the back of a jeep. I kept telling them I was a friend of Aidy's, but that didn't seem to make them any kinder towards me. They weren't rough with me, but they weren't exactly nice to me either. They said they were taking me to see the captain and that I was in real trouble. The next thing I knew, I was being marched into this room and there was this captain with a bald head sitting behind a desk looking up at me and asking me all sorts of questions, like what my name was, what I was doing there, and where did I live. So I told him, and he shook his head and said, didn't I know I could have got myself killed? I said no. Then he got angry at me, banged the table and told me I was never, never to go through the wire again, and did I understand? I said I did, but I just wanted to find Tips. And he said, who was Tips? And I said she was my cat. And then he said, something he shouldn't have said because you're not supposed to say things like that unless you're praying that is then he bawled out a command of some kind and in came another soldier and saluted it was Aidy. was i glad to see him they say you know this kid soldier that right the captain asked uh, yes sir said Aidy, standing very stiffly beside me and not looking at all pleased to see me she was just playing around captain like kids do she don't mean no harm Aidy was told to take me home to tell my mother and make sure it didn't happen again. Yes, sir, Captain, said Aidy and saluted again. I smiled up at Aidy as he took me out to thank him for coming to my rescue. 
He didn't smile back at all. He walked me silently to the jeep and drove me all the way back home without a single word. He turned off the engine by the farm gate, out of sight of the house. You some crazy girl, you know that? He said. He lit up a cigarette and his face glowed in the dark and I could see now that he was really angry with me. Here's what I'm going to do, Lily, he said. I'm not going to tell your mum about what you've done. If you promise me you won't do this no more. But you've got to promise like you mean it. I promise, I told him. But I didn't mean it. Now you listen to me real good. I've been looking. Harry's been looking. We're going to find that cat for you. Didn't I tell you? Didn't I say? But if you go snooping about, I'm telling you, either you're going to get yourself blowed to bits or they're going to catch you again. I'm serious here. We got patrols in there all day, every day. They'll catch you, Lily. Ain't no way they won't. Ain't no way I can save your hide next time. He told me I could go, so I got out of the jeep. He looked at me just for a moment as I stood there and shook his head. <sighs> just like my little sisters, you is. Trouble. Nothing but trouble. And stubborn as a mule. I knowed you were trouble the moment I first saw you. You do what Adie says now. You be good, you hear? Then he drove off and left me there. I think Adie... I think Adie knows I'm not going to be good. He knows I'm going to go back in looking for tips. As I am too. Because now I know for sure what's been stopping tips from coming out of hiding and eating my food. That guard dog. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to wake up early. I'll wait till Mum goes off to do the milking. No one will see me. It'll still be dark in the early morning, so I should be safe enough if I don't take too long. And Tips always likes going out hunting when it's dark. She's probably hiding somewhere up that, somewhere up there by day, scared stiff of that guard dog. Don't blame her. That's probably why I haven't been able to find her all this time. But I'll find her now. She'll come out in the dark. I know she will. I'll find you, Tips. I promise I will. I so want to tell someone everyone everything that's happened to me today. I think Barry's the only person I could tell. No one else would believe me. Maybe I'll tell him tomorrow. All right, I'm going to leave it there. So, thanks very much for watching, everybody, and I'll see you again uh, next time. Bye-bye.